Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to do a little work on this uh, old farm trailer here. Uh, the coupler, the ball coupler, the guts of it are gone. Uh, this trailer belongs to my nephew now and last time he used it uh, was over helping his sister move some stuff and when he brought it back to uh, to put it under the shelter up at uh, Mama's house, uh, the hitch, the the guts to the coupling here just basically fell apart. Uh, I looked around, couldn't find them, but he asked me if I could fix it. Uh, and I know there's rebuild kits uh, for these couplers. This is an inch and seven eighths ball. Uh, like I say, I know there's rebuild kits for them, but the hole where the latch goes through here is wallowed out real bad. Evidently it had been loose for a while before it completely uh, fell apart and was gone. Uh, plus, I can get the whole coupler for the same price uh, and maybe even a dollar or two less than getting just a rebuild kit. But before I get started on the work on here, uh, if you know me personally or you've been around the channel long, you know I pretty much got a story for everything, so I'm going to take just a moment and tell you the story on this trailer. Uh, back in the, uh, when I was a little fella, preteen, uh, Daddy raised a little bit of tobacco here on the uh, farm. We had an allotment of about four acres, and he rented some that belonged uh, the allotment for a, for a neighbor as well. So. He, he tended about five acres of tobacco, but sometime in the late 50s, maybe early 60s, he had the local welding shop to build three of these trailers. Uh, they were built just to haul tobacco from the, uh, from the field to the barn. Uh, and Daddy, uh, it, and again, if you, ever, if you ever knew my daddy, you would know where I get my OCD from. Uh, but Daddy always drove old Buicks. Uh, I remember a 52 he had, a 53 he had, and a 57. Uh, uh, I believe he bought a Dodge after the 57, but then went right back to Buick uh, after he wore that Dodge out. And when Daddy got done with a car, it was pretty much done. Uh, but he always saved the spare tires uh, out of those cars when he sold them to the junkyard or traded them in, maybe got a couple hundred dollars trade in. So when he got ready to have these trailers built, he went to the local junkyard and, well, probably had to go to several of them, and he got axle spindles uh, the, the same as the spindles on the old Buicks he drove. That way, if he had a flat tire, uh, while burning tobacco. We always burned on Tuesday mornings. But if he had a flat tire, he could go to the barn and get one of those spares that he saved and put on the tobacco trailer and continue work. Back in those days when you born tobacco, you only had uh, maybe a couple tractors, but you had a whole lot of people. Uh, I remember Daddy going to what used to be called Mill Hill over in Selma, North Carolina, and people would run out of their houses. Uh, this would be uh, in the early spring when he'd do this, but he'd go over there and people, people would see him driving down the road or see any of the local farmers driving down the road and they would run out of their house and beg for work. Uh, now you don't even drive in those neighborhoods. In any case, that's another story. But over the years, this trailer, uh, when he, when he finished or stopped burning tobacco, I was about 13 or 14 when he quit raising tobacco and he went to, uh, uh, took a public job as a carpenter. But he got rid of two of the trailers. I really no, have no idea what became of those other two, but he hang, hung on to this one. And over the years, it's had some work done to it. It was widened out so that it reached over the wheels on both sides. Um, he had a longer tongue put on it. It actually had a metal tongue. When this started, it just had a piece of a wood tongue stuck out here with two uh, pieces of metal bolted on it that you would drop a pin in for the hitch. Like I say, over the years, it's had some additions done to it. In the early 80s, I was working with a concrete company, 
and the owner had bought some what was called wraps to go around the drums on the concrete mixers, mixer trucks. And for whatever reason, uh, after putting one of them on, he didn't, he didn't want any more of them installed. Uh, they were a real pain to install, so they pretty much went on the trash pile. And I asked him about them one day and uh, if I could have them. And he said, sure. So I brought them home with me. Uh, they were curved to match the uh, concrete drums on the back of the truck. But I busted out the old wood floor that was in here and flattened those uh, pieces of 3 thick sheet metal, flattened them out, cut out for the wheel wells, and welded them down into place in this trailer. And again, one other change, at some point in time, uh, he had the tongue extended out. This is off of an old boat trailer here. But what we're going to do today is come up here and cut off this coupling, remove it, and install a new one. Now, my welding skills are nowhere near enough to depend on them to be the only, my wells to be the only support. We'll put a bead across the top up here and one on each side, uh, but I'm also going to drill and put a bolt through these. So let me get the camera up a little bit closer and you can see what we're going to be doing. All right, like I said, what we're going to do is uh, cut the welds that's holding this coupling on now and remove this in its like Okay, looks like I'm going to have to uh, put a put a new disc on my grinder. Uh, these little cheap uh, cutoff wheels wear down pretty quick, so I'll put a new wheel on, and I may have to come back and actually cut through the top of it up here. Um, I'm trying to be careful and not cut into the tongue any more than I have to, but I'll bring you back when we get a little closer to having this cut off. All right, removing this. Existing coupling turned out to be more of a job than I anticipated. Not only was it welded around here, but there were several tacks uh, under this bottom side, and someone, the installer, actually reached up inside this tubing right here and welded uh, up inside where a grinder wouldn't reach. So what I did was cut on each side, and I think I got it now, yeah where I can get that off. That'll go on the scrap pile. And now I'll just clean this uh, clean this channel, the, the remainder of this coupling, off of the sides. I'll do that off camera, but I'll bring you back when we're ready to install the new one. And man, there's a huge wasp nest up in there. When I was moving this trailer up here yesterday, I saw a bunch of those old big red wasps and I guess that's where they come from. They're not, there are none on it now. I left them about an eighth of a mile up the road. I'll bring you back when I get this cleaned up and get ready to install the new one. Okay, finally we can get back to, to this project. Uh, got up this morning and got my shower, started to get dressed, and I thought to myself, you know, if I'm gonna tell folks that it's been two weeks since I left off on this video, I probably need to put on a different shirt than what I had on before. So I pulled this one out of the closet, put it on, and thinking to myself, you know, I very seldom wear this shirt out there in the shop, so it won't be the same. I reviewed the footage from two weeks ago, and sure enough, I had the same shirt on. I won't bore you with all the details, but it took me over two weeks to get one of these couplings. Uh, it was just a, a major CF. But we're ready to continue on with the project. So two things you watch for when you get one of these ball couplers. Number one is your ball size. Be sure you 
you get the right size is inch and seven eighths, two inch, uh, two and three sixteenths, whatever ball size you desire. And the other, be sure you get one to match the channel width. Uh, and that was not why it took me two weeks to get this one. Uh, but let's mount this on. And what we're going to do, step over here to my workbench. We're going to take a transfer punch and transfer these holes on, off, on two sides, the two holes. During the two weeks it took me to get this, I had occasion to uh, be at a uh, couple locations that sold trailers. And I made it a point to walk out and look at them. Uh, trailers, uh, log splitters, uh, various different utilities that you pull behind a vehicle. And it was about 50-50% uh, on how many of them were actually welded into place, like the one I took off of this, and how many of them were simply bolted. I didn't see any that were bolted and welded. I think what I'm going to do today is bolt this one. Uh, I could put a, a good weld across the top here, but my vertical weld skills aren't that well. So, again, I've got a, a transfer punch, and the secret to the life of a transfer punch is that you're not trying to uh, put a punch hole in there to start your drill with. You just want to transfer that hole is all we're going to do with the punch. So a simple light tap. And all four of the hole locations. Now we're going to take a center punch and put us a good divot in there. We've transferred that uh, and got it in the center. These are 3 8 bolts that I'm going to be using, but I'm going to drill a a uh, pilot hole about the half the size of that 3 8 as you've heard me say before if there's any tool in this barn that I'm scared of or I've got utmost respect for it's a drill or a drill press primarily a hand drill as I've said before the worst I've ever been heard out here in the tin barn is with this drill right here Now we got the 3 8 bit and I'm going to, I'm going to drill it with the 3 8 and hope everything lines up that I don't have to enlarge the hole any. Uh, but if I do, I'll put a larger bit in. Hopefully with transferring like I did, the holes will be will line up perfectly. Alright, let's see how everything lines up. Alright, that one's going to need a little help on the opposite side. Let's see how this one does. cooking with gas. 
All right, before I tighten those up, I'm going to, I need to put some safety chains on this trailer too. So I'm going to measure and lay out a, uh, a through hole for this. We'll drill it while we're right here and put the safety chains on. While I'm right here with the drill, I'm going to drill and tap a uh, quarter twenty in this side right over here. You'll see what that's for shortly. I want to be sure. Yeah. Somewhere right along in here will be fine. Alright, now I'll grab my socket and my uh, wrench and we'll uh, mount the coupler, coupler on and the safety chains. Alright, for the safety chains I'm just using some uh, link chain that I had around the tin barn here. We've got a washer on the end, then our chain. Chain, then another washer, and I'm going to put some thread seal on, some red thread seal that says it needs uh, heat and special tools needed for disassembly. Okay. One other safety precaution I like to do on something like this is I'm going to take my punch and I'm going to disturb these threads right here at the nut. I may have to get a chisel to get in there a little bit closer. But that will just be one more thing to assist in those uh, Nuts not coming off. Of course, we've got our bolt, and the washer on the head side, head side, and we're putting the lock washer on the thread size side. Let's put some thread lock on that as well. I know some of you were probably concerned that I was damaging those threads using the hammer to drive that bolt in. But it, it bent them over just a little bit, but not enough to cause an issue. Alright, the coupler's installed now in the safety chains. I still got to get my hooks for the end of the safety chains. Hopefully it won't take two weeks to find them, but nobody locally has anything like this on the shelves anymore. They got plenty of empty spaces. But remember that quarter twenty hole we drilled and tapped over here. Let's go inside the tin barn and make us a pin, uh, a latch pin to go through here and this quarter twenty hole will be used as a just a keeper chain, a piece of jack chain to keep from losing that pin. So I'll meet you back inside the tin barn. I haven't done it in a long time, but I used to uh, 
pick up old copiers, fax machines, those kind of things, and salvage the rollers out of them. Uh, I'm getting kind of low right now, but uh, this was a piece I've got that will will fit through the uh, latch hole on the uh, ball coupler. So I've cut off a piece. I'm going to mount this in the lathe just enough to face the ends and put a little chamfer on them. So we'll, we'll face the end first. Alright, we got us a nice little stainless pin with uh, uh, a good lead-in chamfer on each end. So let's turn over to the mill now and drill a couple holes. Okay, I got a little piece of aluminum scrap down in the uh, bottom of my vise just to have something uh, for this pin to set on. And I don't care if the uh, don't care if the drill bit hits it. Now I've already found center from uh, front to back uh, for this size stock. I made one of these pins for another <coughs> another trailer. Uh, was the last thing I did on on the lathe or on the mill. <coughs> Excuse me. What we're going to do though is drill this piece. For these little, uh, what do we call these uh, hitch clips? For one of these little hitch clips, we'll drill a one eighth, about a quarter inch in from each end. So, get my spotting drill, and I'm going to use it and simply touch the edge, is all I'm going to do. That's plenty close enough for finding the for finding the end. So I'll zero out there, and I'll come in. I'll come in three hundred thousandths, and put a spot. While we're right here, we'll change out bits. All right, now we're going to come to the other end, and again, just just touch it. Zero out the X, come over three hundred thousandths. All right, I'll buff off these spurs, burrs on the Scotch Bright. <coughs> excuse me, on the Scotch Bright wheel. Measure and cut us a piece of jack chain. Then I'll meet you back over at the uh, trailer and we'll wrap this video up. Okay, I think we're ready to wrap this video up now. Uh, need a little WD-40 on that just to slick it up. But I've that quarter to any hole we drilled and tapped over here. I've uh, mounted the jack chain, chain through it. The pin we just made We'll simply go through here and this uh, hitch latch, hitch pin, will snap in the other side so that that don't accidentally come up and going down the road. And again, some of you are probably thinking, well, why don't you just run to the hardware store and get one of those little heart pins and put through there instead of uh, uh, drilling the holes and doing all the work to make that pin. Folks, I'm telling the shells are bare around here. I'm on the East Coast, Eastern North Carolina. I don't know what it has to do with all this Chinese stuff coming in on the West Coast and just not making it to the stores here. But these type things, hooks uh, for the safety chains, these heart pins, again, our shelves are empty around here. You just can't find this stuff. You have to order it. And this coupling, <coughs> excuse me, this coupling actually came from uh, uh, Northern California. I'm assuming some importer there. 
But I hope you've enjoyed this video, got a little bit out of it. It uh, took a whole lot longer to do it in real life than this video will last. But uh, I think my nephew will be happy with this. The only thing I, I just remembered I got left to do, I need to get my chisel, a uh, small chisel, come in here and dis disturb these threads a little bit. And I think with the uh, thread lock, the lock washer, and disturbing the thread some, it should hold or shouldn't vibrate out going down the road. So y'all take care and I'll see you on the next video.